This video is brought to you by Squarespace. You guys need to understand something about Robots the Movie. I've been saying this for so long, but no one believes me. Now let me explain here. It all starts with iRobot. See, in iRobot, Will Smith is a, is a robophobe, a rosist, if you will. He hates robots so much because he thinks they're gonna take over the world. Turns out, he was right, they ended up being bad, but he befriended a good free-thinking robot. And they learned a little bit about each other and, you know, made some friendships along the way. And in the end of the movie, they all stored away the robots. Now, what is the sequel to this movie, you ask? Well, of course. It's I Am Legend. See, Will Smith ended up giving all these people the T-Virus and they turned into these rabid, evil creatures, right? He finds someone who believes is the cure to all of this. And the movie ends leading you to believe it's a happy ending. They found the cure. Everything is better. But that's not the case. See, whenever all this stuff was going on with the virus and all that different stuff, it was just a distraction. The robots in those storage containers, they got out. While all the humans were busy fighting each other, you know, fighting off these the evil demon creatures. The robots got out, killed what was left of mankind, and now, deep into the future, we have the movie Robots. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Will Smith is responsible for the genocide of humanity. But let me tell you guys another secret. There's actually something plaguing the world even more than this Z virus that was happening in I Am Legend or the robots in iRobot. And I'm, of course, talking about website building. Well, I got something for you. It's called Squarespace. Now, if you guys don't know Squarespace, obviously it's the incredible website builder that takes all of the confusion and pain out of building the website. No more having to hire someone. You can do it all yourself and you'll have complete control. Because making a website is quite important for all walks of life. Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you want to be a music uh, a person, a, a YouTuber, whatever. Maybe you got a social platform. Maybe you want to blog. Maybe you want to make some a recipe, something, something. Who knows? But baby, you can make a website for anything. With Squarespace, you have a ridiculous amount of pre-built layouts you can choose. And they are arranged in a way that makes the creation of the website extremely streamlined. Not to mention everything in these pre-built things are completely customizable. You could add things such as text, video, photos, audio, products, newsletter signups. Um, appointments, calendars, tour dates, menus, whatever you could possibly think of, you can add to the site. And it has fantastic podcast support, which I mean, everyone and their dog has made a podcast at this point, or at least is thinking about making a podcast. So now would probably be the best time to do it. So if you are someone who is in desperate need of making a website, but you want to have your hand in the process of creating it, you don't want to have to hire someone, you wanna do it yourself, well, this is the place to go. It's simple, it's easy. So go to squarespace.com, get your free trial, and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash pig, and guess what, you get 10% off the purchase of your domain. But back to robots. Robots is a movie about a robot. Oh. And for some reason, even when it comes to a super advanced society, a super advanced world where robots are in charge of everything, humans are completely gone. They still are plagued with the exact same problems we have today as humans. Like underpaying job, the working class getting treated like garbage, big corporations making you feel like you don't look pretty enough and you need upgrades in order to be pretty. And most of all, Big Well, baby. Everyone loves Big Well. I mean, look at him. Look at him. What is he? What is he, Paul? I don't know, he's, he's Big Well. And of course, we have the biggest villain of them all, capitalism. Honestly, seeing all these like deep messages in this movie is, is hilarious just by how much like slapstick comedy and goofy stuff is in here. Don't get me wrong. You know, I like slapstick. You know, it's, it's got a soft spot for me, you know, and I like it occasionally. But throughout this movie, every time there's like a transition to another story scene, we get like a long chase scene. We get a Rube Goldberg machine. Or, or some something like that, where it's just a long-winded, a bunch of like people moving around, you know, getting thrown around and stuff like that. It's not like I didn't like it, you know. I'm just a big boy, you know. I'm a, I'm not a little boy anymore. It doesn't tickle my uh, my my testes anymore. Go on, tickle me. I won't even giggle. But that does not make the movie terrible. We have the main character here, Rodney Copperbottom, whose birth scene was good. I'll admit it. The whole scene of them using references to human sex, but instead they're basically buying an Ikea version of a child and putting it together. This thing is 300 bucks. But honestly, the main reason I like this scene is because it's referencing sex. 
Because I don't know if you guys know this, but, uh... I have that. I, uh... I'm an avid sex haver, so... So I can relate. I can, I can relate to this scene, you know? I get all, I get all the references. <laughs> Rodney starts to realize the tragic truth about his family. They're broke. They're poor. They're losers. And you know what they say about poor people, right? You know? They don't have money. So Rodney seeing his father working really hard in order to barely scrape by, he decided to try to become an inventor in order to not only help out his father, but to potentially make some extra money in the future to save his family. So he basically tells his mom, I'm going to the big city. I'm gonna go out there and make it big. I'm gonna become an inventor like Big Weld. <laughs> yeah, you guys remember Big Weld? He's like a, like a big ball, he rolls around. His I love Big Weld, I love that guy. And this is where we meet the man who carries the entire movie on his back, of course, the legendary Robin Williams. I mean, what can I say about his character Fender? He's just Robin Williams. He's just walking around doing Robin Williams stuff. You know, it's always good. It's the classic case of plopping a comedian in there, telling them just go crazy, just do your thing. And you know, it works. Rest in peace, King. Whenever Rodney gets into the city is where shenanigans truly begin. One thing I like about this movie is how truly realistic it is. All right, okay. <clears throat> Maybe not in that way, but I'm talking about the weird delusion that we get told our whole lives that just work hard Just believe in yourself and with enough hard work You'll make it anywhere now if you're like me and uh, you know getting close to 30. I'm not I'm not actually I'm, I'm actually I'm actually 20 years old Don't I look it but you realize that's complete bullshit and I like how this movie really lets you know that the system is rigged against you. Sometimes it doesn't really matter how hard you work, how hard you try, it just might not work out for you regardless. Hell, most of the time it won't work out for you, which is the bleak and depressing reality of our world. But that doesn't mean that you should give up because trying is a little bit better than just wondering if you actually tried. But anyway, reality gets rammed inside Rodney's fat copper bottom jeans, boots with the metal, and his so-called idol Big Weld. Remember? Remember Big Weld? The big ball guy? He's like rolling around and shit. Oh, I love that guy. Not only is he gone, but he's replaced by a big corpus shiny guy. And the villain of this movie is as goofy as it gets when it comes to bad guys. Big business guy walks around and says, hey, guys, what if we, uh, what if we made more money? What if we, uh, what if we took from the poor? You know, what if we made the poor people's lives worse? Actually, hell, what if we just kill them off? What if we just kill off the poor people so we can make more money? I'm, 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 I'm actually serious. That's what, that's what he's saying. He's literally saying, let's kill off the poor so we can, <laughs> the people who can't afford the upgrades, just, just off them. You know, they're not worth anything. Oh shit, this is getting real. We even get to see a perfect representation of the Amazon workplace. The two main villains of this movie, I'm just gonna call them Jeffrey Bezos and Elon Musk. I mean, the similarities are uncanny. And not only do we have the horrific work environments that we all know and love, but we also have workplace sexual harassment, which again, we all know would love. So after Rodney Fat Bottom gets a fat reality check from the big bat corporate dude, we get another long transition scene from some goofy, funny moments. He's like walking around. Now he's magnetized. Now he's flying down the road. This happens a lot. But then we get to see the dark, brutal underbelly of the robot society and how horrific it truly is as we start to understand how severe things truly are. After Big Weld left, you know, the big ball guy, he's like rolling around and shit. He's like big old ball. Like, I love that guy. But everything has gone to complete shit for poor robots. Robots, so much that they have started to scrap robots that they don't make parts for anymore. The next one that is completely outdated happens to be Fender. Not sure, they are robots, so we shouldn't care about them. But if we really break it down, that is truly a terrifying thought. You know, a, a city run by some corrupt rich person, and they care so little about the working class and the poor people that instead of putting money into things that'll help out those people or just benefit the world in general, they'd rather just watch them die on the streets as long as they get that little extra cash. Imagine living in a world like that. Thank God we don't live in that type of world, right guys? But then we meet the best character in the movie, Auntie Thick. Seriously, this is a children's movie? And as a father myself, I find this absolutely appalling that they have put such a goddamn bombshell on this movie. When I'm watching a children's movie, the last thing I want to do is have a boner. And they made sure that I had one. Like the last thing I would want to do is get seduced by a dump trunk auntie that would just tuck me in bed and read me a little bedtime story and give me a kiss on the forehead. Good night. Good night, mommy. Good night. But anyway, now we have a gang of poor people. A gaggle? 
a flock. And this is where Rodney becomes the messiah of broken robots. After Fender realized that they don't sell his parts anymore, Rodney used his inventor knowledge in order to fix up him. And that ended up causing quite a commotion because a lot of people are out of commission and need some parts and need some help. So Rodney sets up an underground clinic where robots that are out of commission come to get fixed. And I love how there's even a portion taking a jab at insurance and how like people can't afford it. Here goes with insurance. Oh, I forgot. Everybody come on. Again, it's just hilarious how many parallels there are to like our, you know, political climate when this is just a goofy movie about robots. So anyway, all poor people, you know, they're fearing for their lives and Rodney comes in to save the day. And that attracts a large audience, brings that attention to none other than Jeffrey Bezos and Elon Musk. They start getting angry because, you know, if people start figuring out they could take care of themselves, how are they gonna make money? How are they gonna sell Tesla? You know, what's gonna happen with Tesla Industries? And to make matters even worse, Rodney's daddy is on the chopping block as well. So he starts realizing he needs to figure out a way to make sure not only Fender, but his daddy and all of the robots who need parts don't just get scrapped. So his solution to this is going to a dance because you know, Big Weld's there and we all love Big Weld. He's, dude, I wonder what he dances like, you know, he's just a big ball. Like what's a dance? Like what, what does he do? He's roll around and dance. But unfortunately, Big Weld wasn't there. But Rodney actually calls out the Elon Musk and ends up getting caught. But that one lady that got sexually harassed when Rodney was watching, she ended up saving Rodney's life by seducing Elon Musk. So after they escape, she ends up taking them to where Big Weld is. And we find out that Big Weld was actually just a big ball the whole time. I don't know what I was thinking. And then we get another mug moment because there are so many Rube Goldberg machines in this movie. But this one is like ridiculous. It is kind of filler content for the movie, but this one opens up a completely different dimension of dominoes. Like, I don't even understand this part of the movie. But we find out Big Weld isn't so big anymore. And I have yet to see him weld a single thing. But he basically gave up. Uh, he's upset because Elon Musk took over and made everything about money and not people. I, I still don't really get why Big Weld like just left because he has seniority over him. Like he has authority over him. He's number one just fire them, you know? And I know you're saying, oh, it's not that simple. Oh, just wait, because it is, which makes it even more confusing. I don't know, I don't know. I feel like they could have just written his whole thing a little better. So instead of fighting back, he ends up crying like a little baby. And all the while Fender got caught and is stuck in the Amazon factory. So anyway, Big Weld actually comes back to help. And why, why you ask? Because Aunt Fanny, baby, yeah, shit, I'm serious. Seriously, Aunt Fanny has so much goddamn junk in her trunk, she actually rizzed Big Weld out of hiding. So Big Weld just goes up to Elon and says, you're fired. Um, yeah, he could have done that before he left. I know the whole movie wouldn't have happened, but like, that just is silly. Like, he that's all he had to do? He just had to fire him? Okay. So anyway, Elon knocks him out. The entire ending of the movie is just a chase scene. Like, just like what's been happening a lot throughout the movie. It's just a chase scene. Bad guys end up losing, good guys end up winning, they end up eating the rich and giving to the poor. And Rodney goes home with Big Weld and he's like, hey mom, look, it's Big Weld. He is a ball, he is. And Big Weld's like, hey, Copper Bottom, you're my number two and you're gonna be my successor. Now this movie does have a lot of terrifying parts, but again, it's just a movie, you know, nothing in this movie relates to the real world, thank God. Maybe someday we also can have this happy ending, right? I'm totally sure one day we can defeat Elon Musk and Jeffrey Bezos together. But seriously though, this movie's pretty fun. Like I, you know, it's it's an enjoyable movie even as an adult, it's just kind of goofy. It is hilarious how much this relates to the real world and how much quote unquote political stuff is in there, which personally I don't really consider this political stuff. It's more of just human stuff being a good person versus being a bad person. It just happens that those things relate to rich people and poor people a lot of times. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe. Please make sure to share. Please make sure to turn on notifications. And I will see you on the next episode of Big Well, baby. Everyone loves Big Well. I mean, look at him. Look at him. What is he? What is he, Paul? I don't know. He's, he's Big Well. <laughs>